Hi there. Um, in this tutorial, I'm just going to quickly go through how to make this simple web button for a use in websites, blogs, whatever you want. Um, the process is really easy, quite quick, and uh, yeah, let's get to it. All right. So our first step is going to be um, creating a new document. That is easy as just coming up to File, New, and it'll bring up our new document dialog box. Um, for this tutorial, I'm going to use a web preset just under the preset uh, drop down here. And we're just going to use the uh, rectangle 180 times 50 preset. Um, different versions of Photoshop might have um, different presets. So if you don't have this, just type in the values manually. Just go 180 by 50 and make sure you have a DPI of 72. Anything on web should have a DPI of 72. Any higher and it's just wasted. All right, and once you got that, you just press OK. So um, the first thing you're going to want to do is change the background color to uh, the, the same color as where you're going to place the button. Um, ideally, if it should be a flat color. If it isn't a flat color, I'll explain how to set it up the button at the end of the tutorial to accommodate for things like gradients or backgrounds that have, that have images or something like that. But for, um, if your background is a flat color, just paint in the, um, the color here. Well, um, I'm going to leave mine white because I'm making the button for a white background. All right, so the next step would be to is to um, draw in a rounded corner object. So we're just going to come over to our object button and just click and hold on it and come down to round rectangle tool. All right, and before we draw, we make sure we set our radius to our desired um, our corner radius to our desired size. Um, I'm just going to stick with five pixels for now because. That's all I'm going to need. If you want your button to look more rounded rather than square, you can increase that up to 10, 15, maybe 20. It all depends on the size of the button. All right. So once you've got that sorted, we're just going to zoom in a little by pressing Control Plus, and we'll just come up to the top left-hand corner here and just draw out a shape. Um, just be sure to leave some space at the bottom and on the right side for the drop shadow, and we'll just drop our shape in there like so. All right, now we're just going to put on some text on top of the button. Um, so we'll just come up and select our text tool. And uh, just be sure um, that after you draw your object that you deselect and reselect the layer. Um, otherwise, the automatic setting would be that the type tool is going to type inside the object. And obviously, that's not what we want. We want to place it on top of it. Um, a good way to find out that it's not going to do that is the brackets around the type tool will be square. If it's going to type inside the object, they'll turn into little rounded edges. Um, so we'll just click here and we'll just type in something. I'm just going to type in click here. Alright, and you can move your mouse off to the edge of the text and you should be able to move the text around like so and position it where you want. Um, here would be a good place to change the size and the font. I'm pretty happy with what I've got up here. Um, but you can use whatever you want for this. Try though not to use like stupid over the top fiddly with little text and that sort of thing or fonts. Um, you want people to be able to read it. If you're using something that's incredibly script or dingbat based it's going to look a bit silly and nobody's going to actually realize it's a button. So try and keep to something pretty simple like sans serif or even serif fonts if you want. Cool. So once you're done, you can come up and click the tick, and it'll be placed in. Um, to center both the button and the text so they align together, we'll just come up and we'll select our pointer tool there, and we'll just holding shift select both the text layer and the shape layer. And with the pointer tool selected, you'll get some um, quick links to aligns alignment. So we'll just want to click the center align one here and that should center the text to the button. Alright, now we're going to add some layer styles to the object background just to give it a gradient and a drop shadow and some other things. So clicking on our object layer and then double clicking over in a blank area will bring up our layer style dialog box. So the first thing I want to do is obviously give this button some color. So we're going to come down and give it a gradient. So if you click on the gradient overlay, it should put a gradient over it. Obviously I don't want black and white for my gradient, so 
just leaving all the other settings the same we're just going to go here and click on the gradient here so they'll bring up this dialog box you got some presets up here but obviously the presets aren't going to count for everything so we're going to make our own gradient so we're going to start by double clicking on the darkest color and we'll change that to whatever we want I'm just going to use probably a dark blue like that and do the same for the light color you might use something like a there you go that looks good and we'll hit OK and then hit OK on this and our gradient overlay is done so you can zoom out a little bit to better see your button if you want just pressing control minus you should be able to do that with the layer style dialog box brought up um, now we're going to add a drop shadow on it so again just clicking on the drop shadow um, I'm going to keep most of these the same except for the distance and the size I'm going to bring the distance down to about 3 and we'll do the same, same for the size um, You'll notice that the gradient um, the gradient kind of blends in with the drop shadow. It's probably not what we want, so we'll bring down the opacity of it just so the shadow is a different tone to our darkest color there. There you go, that looks a bit better. Also, I think we'll add a stroke around the edge of the um, button. Uh, we'll change the size of that to one pixel, and we'll use a dark blue for that. probably about there. Cool. I'll hit OK. Alright, once you're done with everything there, we'll just go OK. Now, obviously the text here doesn't really pop out that much to you, so we're going to add a little drop shadow to the text. So we'll come over to our text layer here and just double click on the blank area. And again, tick the drop shadow button. Um, try and keep the drop shadow on text as quite low. Probably about 2 pixels. <laughs> You can turn the preview off and on again just to give a give you an idea what it looks with and without. So I'll probably bring that down to one. Yeah, I like that. Alright. So now we have a button. Pretty much all done. Nice simple easy way to make a button. Alright, so now we're going to um slice this image up ready for web. We want to try and get rid of this excess white space here. So um what we're gonna use for this is the slice tool, which is up here. Um, in CS3 it's its own tool in the um, toolbar, but um, I think in newer versions like CS4 and CS5 they group it under crop tool. But yeah, for this we want the slice tool. And what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the corner here and we're just going to draw out a little box over this, just past the edge of the drop shadow. Um, the best way to describe what the slice tool does is it pretty much nominates a bunch of small crops ready for um, export to web formats. So once we have one of these drawn out we can come up to here and we can select the slice select tool and using that we can just double click on our slice and we can give the slice a name so it's already got a name set up for when we export it. I'm just going to call it button for now you can call it whatever you want. Alright so now we're ready to export this into a web format. So what we're going to do is we're going to go file and we're going to go save for web and devices. And this is going to bring up this large format box here. Pretty much it's going to give you, should give you two views if it doesn't just go two up. And it's going to give you an original view of what the file looks like in Photoshop and a view of what you've set it to in your preset. Um, if your background is just a flat color and you've set it, or if, and you've already painted it in as the background, you can safely use anything in this dialog box, uh, JPEG or GIF or a PNG8. PNG24 is probably overkill if you just having if you don't have anything of transparency for now, but yeah. However, if your background has a gradient background or it's or the button's going to be stuck over a photo or something, you're going to want some form of transparency. So to do this, we're just going to cancel out of here for now, and we're going to come down to a layer dialog box here, and we're just going to turn off the background, and you should get given a transparent background like so which is nominated by these little checkered patterns. And again, we're going to come up to File, Save for Web and Devices, and I'll bring that up. All right, there are three options here you can do to use transparency. Um, the one that's going to give best results is PNG24, because it gives alpha transparency, which pretty much means any areas which are opaque are going to remain opaque, and you can have background elements coming through them. This is good for drop shadows, because drop shadows aren't a solid color. 
However, if you're wanting to support older browsers like IE6, PNG24 is not going to work. Um, some people say you can get it working in some places, like there's hacks and JavaScript hacks to make the alpha transparency work correctly, but it's very difficult to get working. So it leaves you with the other options of either GIF or PNG8. However, you're going to have to nominate a mat, which pretty much is a flat color which fills in the areas of uh, where opaqueness or opacity would be. Um, that's where you probably set, um, to set your mat, it's best to set it as the most common color in the background. For instance, if it's a photo of a garden or a lawn or something, you can set it as green and it should blend in nicely. However, if it's a gradient, what you're going to want to do is probably set the um, mat as like the mid-range color in the gradient, not like the lightest or the darkest. You want to try and find the middle color and just set it in there. Um, to do that, you can just eye drop the color and just throw in over a hex code there or if you know the RGB values or whatever and hit OK. But um, seeing that IE6 is pretty much only like 0.6 of the browser usage or the last time I looked, you would be probably safe just to go PNG24. Rule of thumb is of people still using IE6, they probably don't deserve to be on the internet. So anyway, PNG24 gives you a nice alpha transparency and it's compatible in most cases. So once you've got that selected, just hit save. And now I'll bring up our save box, so just find where you want to save it. Um, so one thing you're going to notice is when you're saving from here, it generally piles everything into a folder called images by default. And if that folder is not um, present, it'll make its own folder. So just, just keep that in mind. Um, also you want to make sure that you hit the selected slices. Unless you've got multiple slices on the document, um, that way you probably choose you all user slices. Um, but selected slices will just export that one slice because it's going to count all these little areas around the edge here as slices as well. So you're going to get like multiple documents of just white lines and crap like that, which you probably don't want. Anyway, um, there's no need to name it here because we've already given it a name when we made our slices. So we can just go ahead and hit save. And that's all done. And here we have our finished product. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, if you do, please hit the like button, it always helps. And uh, if you want to see more, please subscribe. I do plan on making a lot more of these type of things. Uh, I pretty much spend most of my time on Photoshop or Illustrator. And um, yeah, otherwise I hope this tutorial has been useful to you. And uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask.